What's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2011 Nissan Murano Cross Cabriolet. Up front is a 3.5 liter V6 and down below is a CVT. Now I am super excited to be driving this Murano Cross Cabriolet because it's such an iconic and infamous Nissan product. A lot of people hate these. They think that they're ugly. They think that they're weird. And to be fair, they are pretty strange. It's a convertible SUV and Nissan says or claims that it is the first all-wheel drive convertible. So take that as you will, but today we're gonna take a tour of the Cross Cabriolet and see how it stacks up. But if you'd like to submit your own vehicle to be reviewed by me, you can head on over to my website, zachpradle.com slash submit. It's a quick and easy submission form, takes under a minute to fill out, and I come out to you. But let's get back to that 3.5 liter V6 under the hood, making 265 horsepower. Well, it's nothing to thumb your nose at, quite honestly. It's a pretty powerful engine for the size, and this is the VQ 35DE, also found in the Nissan 350Z the Infiniti G35, and a ton of other vehicles. Nissan has used this engine for years and years and years, and they're still making it today. So it's a pretty well worked through engine. They have some oil consumption issues in this era, but it's not really much to worry about. Now, like I said, paired to it is a CVT, and I don't love it. Nissan CVTs aren't really known for their reliability or, you know, being good. But you know what? It's still here today after 36,000 miles and 12 years later, so I can't really knock it too hard. Last but not least, like I mentioned in the intro, this is all-wheel drive, and that's how the Cross Cabriolets came, and that was actually a big selling point for this vehicle's owner, because she actually has a very, very steep driveway, and in the wintertime, it can be a little tricky, so all-wheel drive gives her that extra peace of mind. So how does it feel to drive a Murano Cross Cabriolet? Well, visibility out the front is great. Visibility out the back is awful. However, steering is good. Like I said, I like that 3.5 liter V6. All the touch points in here are pretty good. And yes, it is pretty sloppy in the corners because of that structural rigidity being down low. There's no roof to help out with the structure, but unless you take your cross cabriolet to a track day, you're not gonna really care all that much. It's not supposed to be a well handling vehicle. It's supposed to be a fun recreational vehicle. That's exactly what Nissan did. So just, you know, don't take it to a racetrack and you'll be fine. And I mean, come on. Driving an SUV with the top down, something that's easy to get into, kind of cool. Not gonna lie, it's kind of cool. It's actually very cool. Why am I lying still? It, it's very cool. This is very fun. I'm happy. <laughs> ah! <laughs> With that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have three gauges. Off to the left is the tachometer, and the center is the speedometer, and off to the right is my coolant temperature and fuel, as well as my digital odometer. On the steering wheel, on the left, I have my source, enter, volume, and phone options, and off to the right, I have my cruise control options. The overall steering wheel actually feels very nice. I'm a big fan of it, and it still feels very modern. Now, does that mean that Nissan hasn't really progressed past 2011 in terms of their design, I'll let you be the judge, but I do like the look of it. Off to the left, I do have a climate control vent, heated steering wheel, trunk release, gas cap, traction control, all wheel drive lock. Then to the bottom right, this actually moves the passenger seat forward on a power switch to help someone getting in the back make life easier. Very interesting. On the door, we have the latch to get in and out, as well as our power mirrors, power locks, and power windows. And moving into the center, we have our little Nissan infotainment system. Very standard here for Nissan of this era, and actually Infiniti as well. And I do get a backup camera, which is fantastic, not only for 2011, because this was seven years before the government required backup cameras, but also because that rear visibility is pretty bad, so relying on the backup camera is pretty helpful. Then we do have our radio buttons for destination, route, if you want to use navigation, dimmer switches, all that goodness with the hazard switch off to the right. Then we have our AM and FM radio dials as well as CD player and aux. This is of that era, a little bit before Apple CarPlay and things like that. And down below we have the climate controls. 
Very simple, very clean climate controls. I do get dual zone, which is fantastic to see and really, really helpful. Then we get a little cubby with the power folding top options. So here's a video of the power folding top because everyone wants to know, everyone wants to see it. So I must oblige you today. Here it is. I don't know how long it takes, so I don't know how long I have to vamp. So if it just cuts off randomly, then that means that it's done and I don't have to talk anymore. I really sincerely hope that it is done though, or I'll just sound like a complete moron from this point out. But hey, it wouldn't be the first time that I've sounded uber duber dumb. Moving up to the shifter off to the left, we do have the actual shifter itself. Push button, move it forward and back. Pretty standard stuff. However, I do like the wood accents around it. And off to the right, we do have a little ash tray. Then we do have cup holders. And here's the thing. There's this cup holder liner that is meant to be removed so you can clean it easier. And with that in, it fails. But if you remove it, it does, in fact, pass the big frame bottle test. So not only is this one of the strangest cars ever made, but it also passes my rinky dink big friggin bottle test. Then we have a pretty fancy opening center console, kind of interesting there that I didn't exactly expect. And then we have these seats. The seats are wrapped in leather. They are heated and power. The driver's seat is also memory and I really, really like them. It has a really nice luxury feel that I wasn't quite expecting out of the Murano Cross Cabriolet. So very interesting to see. However, speaking of seats, we do have back seats. So let's go do a backseat review. It's actually really spacious and comfortable. I actually quite like it back here. I don't really get any crazy amenities. I do have cup holders down here, which fit the big friggin' bottle, but we don't test those. Two vents back here. It's comfortable. It's actually kind of a nice experience. I wouldn't mind riding back here for quite some time. And that's saying a lot for not only a coupe, but a convertible. Not bad at all. Now, of course, this seat is pushed all the way up. It is a manual seat, so, you know, there's that. But really, really nice. I don't really mind it at all. Cool. I didn't think I would. Let's go hop out. We'll take a quick look at the trunk and cargo space. Then we'll talk about the looks. Right around the back of the Cross Cabriolet, I can hold it here on the key fob and it will pop it. And once we are back here, it's honestly not as bad as I thought. So up here, this is where the convertible top lives. So when the top is up, you can put stuff in here, but it's recommended that you put stuff down here. Once you are down here, I mean, it's not the biggest in the world, but it's honestly not as bad as I thought it was going to be. And you can pull this up, you get a little tool set, things like that. If you wanna pause the video and read that, you can. Another pretty funny sticker here, just for where to put the stuff. But overall, that is the trunk space of the Murano Cross Cabriolet. Now we gotta talk about the looks, and this is unarguably the most controversial part of this entire car. It looks weird. And I think an understated part of that is the fact that this is a coupe. It's a Murano coupe. So not only did they change the top of the Murano, they changed the side profile, the wheelbase. It shares not a whole lot of parts, at least in the body, with the standard Murano. And a lot of people forget that. They think they just chopped the roof off, and that's not the case. They made it a coupe, which is just super, super strange. But it does have the power folding top. I think it looks goofy with it up and even goofier with it down. But I love it. I, th that's what I love about this vehicle, and that's the talking point. That's why people love it. However, with all of that being said, let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think finally driving a 2011 Nissan Murano Cross Cabriolet. Well, honestly, the driving experience isn't as bad as what people make it out to be. For an SUV, it's fine. It does the job. Like I mentioned with the handling, would I want this in a Canyon scenario trying to keep up with Porsches and Audis and Lamborghinis? No, this would not be good for that. But driving into town, who cares if it can't take a corner as fast as other cars? Who cares if it drives a little bit strange? At the end of the day, you're not gonna really notice that. And I really appreciate that. But at the end of the day, this car flopped. They didn't sell a lot of them and it was very short lived. Only 2011 to 2014, they never revived it. They never gave it a second generation or nearly even a facelift. So why is that? If it drives fine and it's a convertible, why didn't it sell? Well, I think this car is a good life lesson in not trying to please everyone. This car is trying to be too many different things. It's a luxury car on the inside 
great. But it's also an SUV. Okay, sure, we have luxury SUVs, that works. But now it's also trying to be a convertible. Okay, well, that's strange. Okay, well, now it's also trying to be a coupe, and it is a coupe. Okay, that's even weirder, all right. And it doesn't have a hatch, it has a trunk, like a car. Well, now it's it, it's too spread thin. It was trying to make all these different buyers interested, and what ended up happening is it made no one interested. Well, not many people. However, there is a flip side to that. The owner of this cross cabriolet, Beth, who is the original owner, wanted something that was easy to get in and out of, had the convertible top, and had the all-wheel drive. Now, one could argue that the Jeep Wrangler fills that too. And she actually did own a Jeep Wrangler, but Jeep Wranglers are very aggressive. They're not very friendly to human beings. They drive like covered wagons. Well, this is refined. It has creature comforts, heated seats, backup camera, navigation, heated steering wheel. And yet it also has that added benefit of the convertible top. And so it didn't work for everyone, not everyone loved the Cross Cabriolet, but for those crossroad people, this was the perfect automobile imaginable. And that, to me, is really, really cool. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Beth and Denver for setting up this review. I was so incredibly excited to drive the Cross Cabriolet and finally knock this off my bucket list. It's just such a strange automobile that I just couldn't resist and I'm very glad I was able to film it. But I hope you guys enjoyed watching the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe really liked it. Take care, guys.